Welcome to the Troy Perry Podcast. And here's your host, Troy Perry. All right, guys, this is the Troy Perry Podcast. You can listen to this podcast through any of the platforms that are supported. So if you listen to your podcast through Spotify or Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts, you can send me on there, search my name, find it, and then subscribe. All right, so I thought I'd do something different this week. And this podcast is going to be dedicated to the one and only Macho Man Randy Savage. He is my favorite wrestler of all time. He is who I consider, even still today, one of the most underrated wrestlers due to the era he ended up going through in terms of where the big man dominated wrestling. Uh, yeah, basically, he's yeah, my favorite. He's also who I consider the GOAT in my eyes. All right, so let's get straight to it. Uh, he start, he's, most of his uh, notoriety and fame came from his old DRF days, which commenced in the mid 80s, I believe it was 1985 was his debut. Uh, also, he was known for his uh, wild shenanigans, whether it was uh, through his wrestling style, through his attitude and behavior backstage, or even in his promos when he do one-on-one interviews, uh, especially when he did one-on-one interviews with the late, great Mean Gene Oakland. He always would have his back. he do still weird things, like he would have his back to the camera, or he'll spin around in circles while trying to gather a sentence talking to Mean Gene. It was very unique, uh, very out there, and yeah, no one really does that today either. Uh, his walkout song was completely classic. They, it was, it's called Pomp and Circumstance. Basically, it's the song that gets played through um, like the college graduations in America. You'd hear that song played uh, religiously for graduation, and yeah, that was much a man, Randy Savage's theme music. Uh, he's also, uh, uh, he can be a bit of perfectionist through these uh, peers, uh, his family members, like he'd want to get everything perfected, like he'd be nonstop trying to make sure everything was right in terms of whether it was move for move in his wrestling matches or if he felt like he did a mistake in terms of how he went with an interview promo, uh, yeah, he'd always try and be the best he could be at doing it and his track record would sp- speak for itself as his career went on. Uh, his first big win was in Boston in February 1986. He was able to win the Intercontinental Championship against Tito Santana. Uh, he ended up cheating. Uh, at this stage, he, at this time of his career, he was a heel. And yeah, he ended up just cheating by the good old grabbing some from his trunks. It looked like some sort of, I guess, it's not so brass nuts, but some sort of padded thing that was extra hard surface in his hand and then hit Teo Santana in the head with it and got the one, two, three. Another unique thing that uh, he had going for him was at the time there was no female managers and he decided through talking through other wrestlers and Vincent Mann that he was going to bring his wife on the road at the time who was Miss Elizabeth. So she ended up coming aboard and being the first ever female or first time that the song as a female became a manager slash valet in terms of bringing prestige and just the whole like different uh, side of Randy Savage at the time because yeah they basically put her on a pedestal while basically Randy Savage was just a uh, lunatic basically so that was a pretty cool dynamic that they had for a few years uh, in front of our very eyes on the camera um, his biggest match, which is probably still down, still considered as being the greatest match of all time, at least in WrestleMania point of view, uh, was at WrestleMania 3. He ended up having an Intercontinental title match against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Literally, I've watched this, a documentary on this. Basically, with this match in particular, him and Ricky had written down on multiple pieces of paper 
like uh, notebook style, that um, word for word, uh, move for move, and how that match was going to go down, and it was ridiculous. And it's still down as a classic, still down as probably the greatest match in wrestling history. And in you know, you end up losing that match. Uh, he is also considered one of the greatest Intercontinental Champions of all time. He held the belt for over a year. And yeah, just if you end up, if you have access to the WWE Network, I suggest uh, giving that match a watch. Just, yeah, WrestleMania 3, Macho Man Randy Savage versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And then he finally got his big shot to become the world champion. He participated in a single night tournament uh, at the time the WF world title was vacant and this was at WrestleMania 4 and the big favorites to win the tournament were Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan uh, they just, the way that the draw was set they were versing each other in the first round and it ended up in the draw so neither of them advanced which gave an open road to someone different someone to get that big shot to being the man and in the final, they had Macho Man Randy Savage versus the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase. Now, even though the match was a little bit overshadowed by the uh, run-in appearances, the overbooking of like Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant being involved in the match, being at each person's side. Um, however, Randy ended up coming out victorious. And even though there was some help from Hulk Hogan in that match, this was the opportunity for him to be the man to get all the drawing power to see if he could be as big as Hulk Hogan. Like at the time, basically Hulk Hogan was the biggest star in wrestling. If, if you consider him number one, Randy Savage would have been a 1A. Yeah, about 1A. Um, and over the next year, you'd have Randy Savage defending that belt. Uh, he'd also form a tag team with Hogan and they'd be called the Mega Powers which was a pretty unbeatable tag team at that period of time. Uh, what ended up happening was they ended up starting a feud over the affections of Miss Elizabeth. Like, it ended up being Savage was jealous of Hogan showing affection towards Elizabeth. And then the way the angle worked out was Savage was always paranoid in terms of he thought there was an affair occurring or something in the lines of that. And then that's what caused the rift between the tag team. And that's what caused the main event at WrestleMania 5, which was to be Randy Savage defending his title against Hulk Hogan. And the way Hogan was, he was not unbeatable, but he just went on a sick run in the 80s where you couldn't really get a clean win over Hogan, like unless unless your Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 6, for instance. Other than that, yeah, Hogan usually would get the victory. Um... Yeah, so Savage lost that match. Um, he'd go on later on, in, uh, a year a year later, he ended up winning the WF King of the Ring. And that's when the birth of Macho King Randy Savage came. And this is where he had the manager of Sensational Sherry, who was the, his queen, basically. Uh, the next big... Well, the next big uh, feud and match... TV-wise, Savage had was a match with Ultimate Warrior, WrestleMania 7. Uh, with that match, the loser would have to leave the WWF. Uh, it was an epic match in terms of... It looked like Savage had the match under wraps. He was doing multiple top rope elbow drops, which was his uh, finishing move. And then the way that they had it planned was, yeah, Warrior looks superhuman... Did his uh, over-the-head press, did his splash, and got the one, two, three. Uh, at the end of the match, they had Sherry beating up Savage for his loss because th- she just completely blamed him for their, uh, their phasing out. Uh, then Miss Elizabeth interfered and <laughs> beat up Sherry. And then the whole angle again started all over with Savage being with Elizabeth and they reunited and all that stuff. And then they even got... TV married uh, about six months later at uh, SummerSlam 91. Uh, with that, with SummerSlam, it was the, one of the biggest pay-per-views of WWF's schedule. 
and the main event of that event pretty much was a wedding so that was a uh, pretty cool that uh revisit watching that um and then later on it got to the point where uh savage's personal life took a bit of a uh downturn where he took some time off and in doing so Vince McMahon brought him back as a commentator uh and basically this was the start of WF moving on from older wrestlers such as Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair and then trying to get into the new generation which would be people like Bret Hart, Razor Ramon, Diesel, uh Shawn Michaels so these are the guys that uh they'll that's get pushed into superstardom and to be the main event guys so they basically Savage only wrestled part-time uh his ultimate goal was to go back to wrestling and not be a commentator anymore uh Vince wasn't a fan of that idea so uh even it got to the point where from what I've seen in this documentary is that Savage had an idea to basically have a long feud with Shawn Michaels like it was going to be a planned out two-year feud where at the end Savage would lose to Michaels and then Savage would walk away and retire for good uh that idea got shot down so with that happening uh yeah Savage took his talents elsewhere and elsewhere was going to WCW where guys like Hulk Hogan and Sting were dominating. So in WCW, yeah, like he he entered the his very first appearance was on WCW Saturday night in December '94. Uh, that's when he did a promo of me and Gene Oakland talking about how he was there for one reason only, and that was to be the man and to beat Hulk Hogan. Uh, a few months after that promo, they end up once again teaming up as the mega powers of WCW and end up uniting. Uh, other, even though his time was most known for WWF, he did have he did do some memorable things in WCW. Uh, early on, he uh, won the WCW World War Three in '95, which was their version of a Royal Rumble, except they had three rings and had 60 wrestlers. Uh, yeah, and you had to get thrown over the top rope. And even though he won that match, uh, it was also under controversy because. Hulk Hogan got pulled un- through the bottom rope by the Giant at the time, and they s- considered that as elimination, but they didn't. But the referee didn't see it, and they didn't go back to the video footage. So basically, Macho Man won that match. Uh, he became WCW World Champion in the process of winning that match, and yeah, it was a epic. Uh, yeah, another epic first for Savage. Uh, another thing he also can be. He doesn't have necessarily claim to fame or claim that he did. However, everyone that was involved would say he did. Uh, he made DDP, which was basically... DDP at the time was a low mid-card wrestler. Uh, he wasn't uh, known to be great or over with the fans. However, he had a long feud with uh, Randy Savage in 97. It lasted about a year. I uh, was voted... Uh, feud of the year and even got to the point where at Spring Stampede 97 uh, Savage like Savage had the choice if he wanted to win the match or lose like they asked him straight up if, if he's happy to do whatever and he was and he said he wants DDP to get the win and that started the whole DDP period the whole diamond cutter self high five all that good stuff yeah so he ended up taking some more time off as well uh he ended up having two knee surgeries, so he was past his prime at this stage. Uh, he ended up uh, coming back in 98, 99. Uh, he, he formed Team Madness, which was basically him returning, and he had three women that, cons- that consisted of uh, Mona, who was later on known as Molly Holly, Medusa, who you might know as Alundra Blaze, and Gorgeous George, who was his valet slash girlfriend at the time. Uh, he ended up winning the world title again off Kevin Nash in a tag team match at uh, Bash at the Beach. In the tag team match, it was Kevin Nash and Sting versus Savage and Sid. I believe he was known as Psycho, oh, Psycho Sid. Yeah, he was def- Yeah, so Psycho Sid. Um, well, Sid Vicious, I should say, sorry. Anyway. 
With that match, he became world champion. Of course, the very next day on Nitro, he has an open challenge, and who answers and defeats him for the belt? That's right, Hulk Hogan. So um, that was the end of his very last WCW world title run. Uh, another notable match he ended up having was at Road Wild that same year. He ended up having a match with the worm, Dennis Rodman. And he ended up beating him in that match. It was no DQ and it's known for some type of weird shenanigans, such as Savage got tipped over in a porta potty and, of course, had stuff all over him from what you can gather from a porta potty. So, yeah, there's some random highlights of that. You can watch that on the network. So, just check out Road Wild on there. Uh, he's also known for basically. He made his own rap album, mostly dissing Hulk Hogan. He's also been in numerous movies. Uh, he appeared in Baywatch. You might know him later on in the movies. You might have seen him in Spider-Man, the very first one uh, playing Bonesaw when uh, Spider-Man was Tobey Maguire. So if you don't remember that, just give that check out as well. You can probably find that on Netflix or something. But um, yeah, he's still in numerous video games. He's won 29 titles in his 32-year career. Uh, his very last wrestling appearance was, uh, or last WCW appearance, sorry, was he appeared in a random, way overbooked, Vince Russo-led battle royal on Thunder, uh, where he just appeared and randomly just, <laughs> you just have to watch that one piece yourself. Basically, it's it went viral for a little bit of the match because basically so much stuff happened that didn't make sense. But yeah, Savage going in there, just giving everyone a double axe handle and Basically, he entered the match. He didn't get eliminated. However, he didn't win. So, yeah, it was a bit of a weird match. But, um, yeah, give that a watch. But his actual last televised wrestling appearance was for TNA, actually. Um, appearing uh, basically there to scare Jeff Jarrett. And he was possibly going to have a world title feud with him and win. However, he got pulled from the show and future shows due to the health issues. Um yeah, and basically what occurred then was he retired from wrestling. He ended up uh, making amends uh, with people that he had feuds with, like Hulk Hogan. Um, yeah, he passed away in a car accident due to, um, I believe it was heart failure on the reading. But um, yeah, so he was born in 1952 and he passed away in 2011. And just last week would have been his uh, birthday, so... Yeah, so a very uh, sad note and sad story to talk about. Uh, eventually, uh, even though the, he does have a bad reputation in terms of uh, what might have occurred backstage in WWF near the end of his uh, departure, however, um, WWF made amends with that, um, inducted him into the Hall of Fame. His brother, Lanny Popoff, who you might remember as a genius, inducted him into the Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, Hulk Hogan has nothing but good words for him now. And, uh, yeah, just another thing, if you could just check it out on YouTube, you might see uh, the tribute video, which has um, highlights of his career in, like, a four- or five-minute little package. Um, they have the Coldplay, uh, Coldplay the Scientist song playing in the background. So that was a very sad thing to watch. However, he lives on for video games. Uh, his epic matches. Uh, yeah, any any... Match I'd say you should watch would definitely Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Randy Savage WrestleMania th uh, 3. Um, yeah, so that's it for this podcast. Um, yeah, feel free to give this a listen on all your podcast platforms and however you listen to it. Uh, you also follow me on social media. Um, yeah, that's it for this week. Uh, next week will be a podcast about a random WCW pay-per-view that uh, is dear to me because it was the very last one I'd ordered on uh, Foxtel or OzStars, it was called back in the day. So, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Until the next podcast. All right, guys, last thing I forgot to mention was a few other WrestleMania matches that Randy Savage participated in that will definitely be much uh, must-watch for those out there. WrestleMania 8, you had him... Dustin Ric Flair for the world title. Now, it wasn't the main event. The main event was a farewell match between Hogan and Sid Justice. However, Ric Flair was the champ. 
Savage with the challenger. Uh, Savage ended up getting the victory. Even though he'd lose it shortly after that to Ric Flair, that was a great match also. And another one was his very last WrestleMania match, WrestleMania 10. It was uh, basically a fall, what was it? A uh, fall scan anywhere, sort of no holds barred uh, match with Crush. Um, yeah, WrestleMania 10, check that out as well. Uh, it's uniquely, uh, Crush loses by having his feet tied up and he's hanging, he's basically stuck and. Sav just walks back in the ring and he gets a 10 count for the win. So I guess back then a force count anywhere match or uh, like a, the way it was done uniquely was, yeah, he had to make a 10 count to get back in the ring and but he didn't. All right, guys. So, yeah, thanks for listening. Continue listening to the podcast. It'd be much appreciated. Until the next one. Thank you for listening to the Troy Perry Podcast.